Hello and welcome to the print. Today we are here in Chennai at the campus of IIT Madras. We have come here to understand what has helped the institute to maintain its top rank in NIRF for nine years now. The institute has not just performed well in research and innovation. It has taken conscious efforts to improve diversity and gender gap at its campus, which is also a parameter in NIRF. This year, the institute has made some changes in its undergraduate program to give an opportunity to students to do six-month internships during the courses. This is an attempt to bridge the gap between industry and academia. The faculty and administration here believe that their efforts in the field of startups and entrepreneurship, the idea of one patent a day, and their willingness to take up research projects of national importance have helped them to stay ahead of the others. IIT Madras has maintained the top rank among engineering institutes in all the nine edition of the NIRF. And for six times consecutively, it has topped the overall rankings. But to achieve this feat, the institute has worked continuously in improving its teaching learning, research ecosystem, and learning outcomes, which has helped it in scoring full in the perception this time. Within the institute, we have some teaching feedback, uh, but I don't, I don't see any uh, organization actually collects that data. It's very difficult because teaching feedbacks are typically in IITM every month. Mm -hmm. The students will rank you or will grade you between zero to ten or between zero to hundred during a course. Okay. So I'm teaching a course to uh, say this semester I'm teaching an undergrad course on thermodynamics to uh, our BTEC students, second year BTEC students. Okay. They are expected to uh, give you a grade hmm. every month. Okay. In a semester. Based on they, their experience. They, with based on the way I teach, based hmm. on the way I interact with them, based on the way they learn from me, hmm. based on the uh, content of the assignments which I give them or based on the quizzes which I have conducted in the class. So all of these based on the teaching assistant. Uh, so most of our classes will also have a couple of teaching assistants. Okay. So based on how the teaching assistants have helped them understand a particular topic. <clears throat> uh, in a week, we have four classes. So three classes are on theory. Fourth class is on tutorial, which where we basically explain a particular concept uh, through mostly through board, blackboard, mm. solving a particular problem trying to explain them while we are solving this problem, what they will have to keep in mind. So all these are part and parcel of this rubric, which they basically fill. They will be asked to judge you based on zero to 10 score. We do a lot of things on these. Mm -hmm. For example, based on this uh, teacher's uh, feedback, uh, the course feedback mm -hmm. by the students or teacher, we have awards for teacher, best teacher award, for example. Okay. So in 2020, I got that award for my in my department okay uh, every department uh, we have uh, we give award for every department for example i am part of couple of departments which i look at the data and then based on that we take this particular decision mm -hmm. that okay this particular faculty should get the award so there is a benefit for the faculty in terms of they will get recognized when mm -hmm. their uh, teaching has been recognized by the student so there are uh, multiple, there are five major parameters on which NIRF is based on. And uh, one of the important things that we, where we score is the TLR, we're teaching learning resources, uh, where we actually run uh, sort of world's largest degree, online degree program. Uh, there is a stress given on online education. Uh, we also coordinate many national projects like Swayam, Swayam Plus, uh, where we are the national coordinators. Uh, we have been running uh, uh, Swayam in its earlier avatar called NPTEL for quite some time now. Uh, more than 1.4 million students get benefited out of it. Uh, we are coordinating that. Uh, and um, so that is one part which we, we feel that we are doing very well. Um, on, the, uh, on the other important uh, innovation front also, we have been uh, doing patent a day. Uh, activity. So last year we filed one patent a day, more than a patent a day. We filed for the entire year. For, for the entire year. We have 382 patents. So, and then uh, we are looking at uh, startup Shatam, like our 100 startups this year. So, we are giving a lot more on the graduation outcome. Uh, uh, so, I think that is the direction we are, uh, we are 
pushing ahead. Almost everyone at the campus believes that its research park, which is India's first university-based research park, has helped the institute stay ahead of the others. We are here at the research park of IIT Madras. It's a hub where academia and industry converge. The incubation cell at the research park has so far incubated over 370 startups with valuation of 47,000 crores. India's two unicorn, Ether Energy and Unifor were born at this research park only. Today, IIT Madras is home to one of the largest deep tech startup hub. Uh, we today house uh, close to 370 companies that we have incubated over the decade. Uh, like I said, mostly deep tech uh, areas. So majority of the startups are working in core engineering sectors, uh, science-based innovations, but it's not just about the innovation. Majority of our startups have taken it uh, to the commercial you know, uh, stage. Many are in the market, many have scaled across India. Some have actually gone and uh, in, you know, initiated their footprint globally as well. So the 370 startups that we've incubated today have a valuation close to $6 billion. Uh, we have two unicorns that have come out of this whole ecosystem, Unifor, Aether Energy, the two-wheeler um, Tesla of India, as they call it. Yeah. Uh, we are hoping for a potential IPO coming soon. There are many startups that have crossed the 1,000 to 2,000 crore valuation bench. So these are all based on investments that they have gone on to raise through angels and VCs. So we have demonstrated that what innovations within an academic setting or, you know, youngsters that work with that kind of an academic, you know, uh, setting can, you know, innovate in core engineering and science based areas. And an uh, ecosystem like the IIT Madras Incubation Cell and the Research Park can help them then take it to uh, creating commercial ventures and then scale that commercial, that commercial entity into, uh, into ventures where it can impact society, it can disrupt industries, and it can also make a global mark. So these are all contributors to what you see within IIT Madras as the number one engineering institute, as a number two, I think, uh, place number two in terms of innovation. Yeah. So I think our industry academic collaboration from Research Park, our startups who have done incredibly well, have all contributed to the success story of IIT Madras. Uh, a big part of our early years even was possible because of IIT Madras and the surrounding ecosystem, right? Because when we started, first of all, there was a private sector in India in space was non-existent. So there was a very, uh, you know, important need to have credibility and what the IIT Madras name brings, at least for outsiders, one thing it definitely brings is credibility. So when you go and say you're building rockets and you're a startup out of IIT Madras, people take you seriously. Otherwise, you'll need that from some other way. So that was one big help. Then the other part is because there is so much of R&D involved in the hardware we do, we are always working with research in some way or the other. So in IIT Madras, you're able to get access to research scholars, right? Of master's students or PhD students, professors. So just being in a community where research is considered normal really helps when you're building a startup of this class, right? That is the other thing. And the third part of it is the startup ecosystem here. So if you're by yourself building rockets somewhere in some remote place, there is very little empathy for people who come and people who, who you talk to. Here I go, the problems I have, or I would have had at that time, same problems multiple other people will have. So in all the networking events, we get to learn a lot from each other about, oh, okay, you also have the same problem. Is it? How did you solve it? That, 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 you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, some level of camaraderie comes in just from the fact that people are going through the similar set of journeys. So it has been a wonderful experience. I think I can very clearly say Aknikul would not have even been possible if not for the IIT Madras Association. Despite performing consistently well in national rankings, the global rankings continue to remain a challenge for the institute. International ranking 50% is out of syllabus. Okay, so it's all perception. So some it's also more like uh, we, have, we also participated in the survey. So they just ask uh, which institute comes into your mind to some set of people. And if they say IIT Madras, I get one mark. Otherwise, I don't. So 45% to 50% is out of service for me. So we are only looking at 50% of the other things. 
So I don't know where where we will go in the international ranking. This year we were expecting between 150 to 200. We got around 227. So we have jumped around 60 points. We are yeah. terrib terrib terribly disappointed with that because we were looking at 150 to 200. But I don't know what happened there. Um, but the things that we also get from the international ranking is sustainability was a very nice, well captured one in the QS. And we are, we were 600 plus in sustainability one year before, and this we jumped to some 280 or whatever in uh, just a year, right? Uh, so there are a lot of good things that come out uh, as we learn. I think uh, we will keep improving our uh, citation, our faculty. So because we can't, we don't recruit international faculty. There are certain law, rules, regulations we can have only. With. We have certain limitations in recruiting large in, large number of international faculty. Uh, international students, really we are grouping up, we have 100, 150 students now. But it's again a three year running average, so three, four years, yeah. I think even QS, and I think we will certainly uh, improve. Um, so, so international ranking wise, we want to, we will continue to do better in research, meaning always uh, you can do better in research. While students believe that the female representation has increased at the campus, they think that more can be done to further improve it. We take in chemical engineering. Okay, you are in a, one of the core courses, so you can tell better, like, how, how is the representation there? The girls are there, but the ratio is still very less. Like, one is to four is the ratio from girls to boys, though still is very less, like, participation even is a little low. What do you think can be done to improve it further? Might be like during my preparation time, there were less girls in my classroom. That is the reason we could provide better preparation and motivate girls to join the institute. Uh, it's like it has to begin from the school. So India does have the stereotype that girls go to medicine and boys go to tech. And even at homes, if you are discussing about a career, they just force you to go into a medical field if you're a girl and into a tech field. So that is also a problem that's being reflected more than issue with an institute. We are like the institute is trying to make it more girl friendly or like have more uh, female participation. But there are not many candidates who are attending the entrance exam to be here. Mm -hmm. And also, I, as I said, my department has it more because it's an arts degree. Yeah. So again, it's like a stereotypical yeah. feminine degree. So there is a more girls room. After consistently performing well in all the existing NIRF parameters, now the focus will be on sustainability, which is going to be a part of NIRF ranking from next year onwards. However, the challenge to make it to the top 100 higher education institutions globally will still be there. For that, the institute will have to take some innovative measures to improve the representation of international students and faculty at its campus. This is Fariya Iftikhar reporting for The Print. Thank you.